Skull's MLG. I don't understand what you're saying. Leet Skull's MLG. What on earth does that mean? I don't know. I didn't expect a kind of Imperial Inquisition. <laughs> Nobody expects the Imperial Inquisition. Our chief weapon is surprise. Surprise and fear. Our two weapons are surprise and fear. And an almost fanatical devotion to the Emperor. Our three weapons are fear, surprise, and a fanatical devotion to the Emperor. And ruthless, if I should say, I mean, tsk, our many diverse elements are fear, surprise. Ah, oh, I'll come again. Good day. Book series can be somewhat difficult to get into if you don't know which book to start with. Really, if you want to get into a new series, you need to find a gateway book. A book that can represent an entire series by itself. And Warhammer 40k is represented quite well by Eisenhorn. Eisenhorn is actually the title of the omnibus which collects the Eisenhorn trilogy, Xenos, Malaeus, and Heretictus. Now we are only going to be covering Xenos, and even then, unlike with other videos, I am going to keep spoilers to a minimum. Since the only real way to find all three Eisenhorn books is by buying this omnibus, we are just going to take a look at this cover. We get a well-detailed image of Eisenhorn himself, although I do hope he looks a little bit better than this, because he looks looks pretty ugly, and what's with that expression on his face? Also, Eisenhorn looks quite bulky, to say the least. Just look at the size of that power sword. Not going to be dealing with that, I would imagine. But all told, this cover is actually really quite good, despite the bulkiness of that expression. Eisenhorn does look awesome, and the cover can generate interest. The book is written from the perspective of the main character, Gregor Eisenhorn, an Imperial Inquisitor. The Imperial Inquisition essentially serves serves as the Imperium of Man's secret police. There are three branches of the Imperial Inquisition. Xenos, which focuses on aliens. This is the branch that Eisenhorn serves. However, he doesn't actually fight that many aliens. In fact, most of the time he just fights chaos. And really, in the first book, there aren't even any aliens present until the very end. You then have Malaeus, the Demon Hunters. They are mainly focused with fighting demons and the forces of chaos. And then finally, you have Heretictus. They are the least cool of the bunch. They just search for heretics and things of that nature, and mainly they just fight humans that they don't like. Eisenhorn is basically a Jedi-like character. He answers to no one but the Inquisition itself. And not only that, but he has psychic powers that are functionally similar to Force powers, as he uses a mind trick that he calls the Will to get people to give him information and things of that nature. Furthermore, in the Inquisition, there are numerous little groups and schools of thought. Eisenhorn is a Puritan. Basically, he does not use the forces of chaos against chaos, and he belongs to the Almouthan group. Basically, he likes to work within the realm of Imperial law instead of just using brute force. The book itself opens up on the ice planet of Hubris. Eisenhorn has tracked his nemesis, Iclone, to the planet and has to stop him before he can enact an evil plan. Unfortunately, Iclone is actually a step ahead of him and has time to prepare. Eisenhorn tracks into some cryo vaults, and when he arrives, Iclone opens up the cryo vaults so that the awakening people will slow him down. Iclone also has a number of troops with him as well, and Eisenhorn actually loses a member of his team, which causes him great anguish. Eventually, Eisenhorn chases him to the roof of the cryo vault whereupon he shoots him in the head in a very awesome scene. Eisenhorn finds a strange device 
device amongst iClone's gear. That device will become important later on. After killing iClone, Eisenhorn decides to try and find out how he got to Hubris in the first place, and while undertaking this investigation, he adds a new member to his party. Goodwin Fishig is a member of the Adeptus Abetes. Think of the judges from Judge Dredd. He's basically the tank character of the group. Eventually, Eisenhorn tracks down the person responsible for getting iClone on planet, and he has to fight another battle. That's decent enough, but he doesn't actually learn that much information. But he does pick up another party member, a woman named Elizabeth Beckin. She is basically the woman of the group, and she is Eisenhorn's love interest, but there is a problem with that. Now, Beckin is a psychic blank, and Eisenhorn is a psyker, and it physically hurts Eisenhorn to be in close proximity to Beckin. So really, it's a very tragic love, to say the least. Eisenhorn does learn that the Glaw family of Gudrun might have had something to do with Iclone. So he hires a ship called the Isane, and he also befriends the captain, Tobias Maxilla, who is also a pretty cool character in his own right. They warp out to Gudrun, but when they arrive, they are told that they are going to be boarded in search for contraband. And when the boarders board, it turns out that they want to kill Eisenhorn. And this is because they're working for the Glaws, but Eisenhorn doesn't find this out until much later. Eventually, Eisenhorn is able to go to the Glaw estate undercover as a grain merchant, and when he does, more of the mystery is unraveled. While at the Glaw estate, Eisenhorn finds out that the piece of technology that Iclone had was for one of the Glaws named Pontius. You see, Pontius had his mind transferred to a soul sphere kind of thing, and that device allows him to talk to the outside world. During the course of the Glaw infiltration, Eisenhorn gets captured and he is forced to fight in a gladiatorial game. Needless to say, Eisenhorn is able to escape in a very awesome manner. Spoiler alert, he actually uses one of the arena beasts against the Glaws. Also, during the Glaw battle, he learns that the rest of the Glaw family was heading out to a distant planet, and Eisenhorn gives chase. And that's all you get. If what I said sounded awesome, then you're gonna like the book. Now, without giving too much more away, Let's take a look at Eisenhorn himself and one of the biggest plot holes in the series. The biggest plot hole of the entire series is this. Eisenhorn never fights any aliens. It's always the forces of chaos. At the end of Xenos, Eisenhorn is in close proximity to some Xenos, but they aren't actually the main threat. In the last book of the series, Eisenhorn actually works with some aliens, so I don't really get why Eisenhorn is a Xenos. Nos Inquisitor at all. What if he were a Malayus Inquisitor? Would he fight aliens all the time? Eisenhorn is without a doubt an RPG character. He levels up throughout the books and gets more and more skills. He adds members to his party. Hell, he could even be a Bioware RPG character because most of the time when he goes out on mission, he only takes with him three or four people. As of the second book, Eisenhorn starts to use a magic sword called Barbister. Basically, the sword has a mind of its own, but Eisenhorn never Never uses it to kill innocents or anything like that. The sword itself is awesome because it can actually deflect bullets. Not even lightsabers can do that. Also, he starts to use a magic staff with which he can cast lightning and animate dead bodies. Also, in the third book, he raises a demon on several separate occasions. Don't look at me like that. Just give me a chance to explain. And early in the book, the demon is bound in a guy studying under Eisenhorn. Just Wait a second. Here is why Eisenhorn used him as a demon host. The guy that was studying under him was an annoying Ponce, but he also led a foolhardy attack that almost got a treasured member of Eisenhorn's team killed. And the most important reason was this. The demon was the only thing that Eisenhorn could use to kill this. A giant mech. Yeah. A Chaos Titan was gunning for him if he had not used that Ponce as a demon host, then that idiot would still have died and so would Eisenhorn and the rest of his team. And there would have been a Chaos Titan on the loose. Furthermore, Radical Inquisitors are pretty much evil. They never ever switch off. They're just constantly being evil all the time. But Eisenhorn, on the other hand, is the kind of man to kick back at the ye old hacienda and just relax. Eisenhorn is a very likable character because he cares about 
people. He is loyal to his friends and actually worries about the Imperial populace. One of the most effective lines in the series is when he is partying down on a luxury train with a lady friend, and after the night of partying is over, he mentions that he has not known its like since. And you really feel for the guy when you hear that. Now, if by some miracle there is ever an Eisenhorn movie, then I can think of two actors that would be perfect for the role. Hugh Jackman. He has the countenance, and he has the voice. And in Van Helsing, he kind of looks like an Inquisitor. But if not him, then Daniel Craig. He too has the same countenance, and he did play as James Bond, which is a character that is highly similar to Eisenhorn. Eisenhorn is a great series. It's able to mix science fiction, action, and mystery all into one really effective package. And really, it's a masterpiece of science fiction right up there with the Thrawn trilogy. For next time, I'm going to be reviewing the German Warhammer 40k fan film, Dominatus. But for now, this is General Lotz wishing you good Brevador trilogy. Good Beckon trilogy. Better speed it up, Dan. I can't wait a year, or whatever, makes you happy.